In this video, we're going to look at the Davison Germer experiment. Now, this experiment, if, we, if we're thinking about the photoelectric effect, it really proved one half of this wave particle duality, right? It proved that electromagnetic radiation, which is usually behaves like a wave, can behave like a particle. The Davison Germer experiment really proves the other half of that, or provides experimental evidence for that second half of the wave particle duality. It shows that particles can have wave like properties, right? So let's look at this Davison Germer experiment. So this was an experiment by two Bell Lab scientists who were looking to um, to provide experimental evidence for the de Broglie wavelength equation. And I have a previous video on the de Broglie wavelength equation if you need a refresher from general chemistry. Uh, but the equation for the de Broglie wavelength is that the wavelength is equal to H Planck's constant over the mass times the velocity of the moving particle. Now, why was this huge? This was a huge equation because it basically implies that any moving object has a wavelength, right? Which in the realm of classical theory kind of sounds ridiculous, uh, but as we'll see here in the realm of quantum, in the realm of the very small, it is actually um, observable and verifiable, right? So, um, so yeah, this shows that any moving object Anything in motion has a corresponding wavelength. And the Davison Germer experiment provided some experimental evidence for that. So, this is a rough sketch of what their experimental setup looked like. So, they have an electron beam that's impending on a nickel crystal. And once it hits that nickel crystal, it's going to interact with the lattice of nickel atoms and it's going to scatter, right? There's going to be a diffraction pattern. And what Davison and Germer realized. Um, is that the scattering of the electrons was um, producing a wave-like diffraction pattern, right? Um, and so they noted that there was a peak intensity around a scattering angle of about 50 degrees from the, uh, from the face of the nickel surface, right? And that at that 50 degree scattering angle, these electrons had a energy, a kinetic energy of 54 electron volts, right? So high energy electrons, 54 electron volts um, at this highest incident angle at 50 degrees. So we have a, a particle that has a kinetic energy of uh, 54 EV. And based on the, the scattering pattern, they determined that the wavelength of that particle was 0 0.165 nanometers. Right. So this was the wavelength of the moving particle. Now, in order to confirm this, what we want to do is to use this um, use this kinetic energy of the traveling particle and see if it matches the wavelength that we get experimentally. Right. So we want to use the de Broglie wavelength equation and see if it matches what we get experimentally. So first we wanna get the velocity of this moving particle. And so we can use the kinetic energy for that. So the kinetic energy is 54 electron volts. And if we convert that to joules, we get 8.651 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Right. So now that we have this kinetic energy, we can plug it into, you know, we can note that the kinetic energy of any moving particles, one half MV squared, calculate uh, V to get the velocity. So uh, we know the kinetic energy is going to be equal to one half MV squared. So just like we did in our, uh, you know, example problem for photoelectric effect, use this velocity. It's going to be two times the kinetic energy over the mass of an electron, right? So we're, we're looking at the electrons in this electron beam, right? So we're, um, so we're looking at uh, the, the mass of this electron. So the velocity is going to be 4358206.28 meters per second, right? So this is the velocity of the particle, right? So just from the kinetic energy, which was experimentally determined, we're getting the velocity 
of this electron. Now that we have the velocity, we can plug this guy directly into the de Broglie wavelength equation and figure out its wavelength. So let's do that. So the wavelength is gonna be equal to H over MV, right? So to do this calculation, we plug in Planck's law, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. Mass of an electron is 9.109 .9 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And then we just plug in our velocity here. Right, and then from this calculation, we should get a wavelength, right? So um, when you do all the calculation, right, remember joules is kilograms, meters squared per second squared. Everything should cancel out to give you a final unit in meters. So we got 1.669 times 10 to the negative 10 meters, right? So if you convert that to nanometers, you get 0.167 nanometers, which very closely matches what we got from the experiment, right? The experimentally determined wavelength matches the prediction from the de Broglie wavelength equation. So what does this mean? Well, it provides experimental evidence for the underlying assumption of the de Broglie wavelength equation, which is that any moving particle has a wavelength. Every particle behaves like a wave, just as the photoelectric effect showed us that every wave can behave like a particle, right? So this really completes both sides of the wave-particle duality, right? The wave-like behavior of particles and the particle-like behavior of waves, right? So this really kind of kind of ties that in. So this is a really important experiment that I wanted to make sure was was introduced to you guys. Um, it's something that's kind of glossed over in textbooks, but I, you know, I wanted to show this full calculation in order to, to really drive it home that the, the experimentally determined wavelength was really close to what was predicted by de Broglie's equation, you know, kind of closing that loop on the wave particle duality.